Today I will show you about something about the Richard's equation uh, for the 1D case. Uh, before I show you, present you some theory and then I will uh, give you the OMS project and, uh, so you can try to run some simulations. So the Richard's equation is the first one. So here we have the variation of the water content uh, where the water content is a function of the water suction. And uh, on the right part of this equation we have the water fluxes. The water fluxes are proportional, uh, depends on the hydraulic conductivity. Um, that in turn depends on the water content of the soil. And then uh, the what moves the water is the gradient uh, of the water suction uh, and gravity. So to solve this equation, we need to define two, uh, two other um, equations. One that describes the hydraulic conductivity and the other one that describes uh, how the water content depends on the water suction. In this case, we, for the water content, we use the van Hamilton model and the hydraulic conductivity is modeling using, uh, is modeling, uh, um, is modeled using the Wallen model. And, um, and in terms, it is based on the binding and solve the retention curve. Uh, to solve the partial differential equation, we use a finite volume method. So the idea is that uh, here we have the domain, space, our uh, space domain, and in the y-axis we have time. So we subdivide this uh, continuous domain uh, in a finite uh, volume element. So we discretize the spatial domain as well as the, the time. So we have a delta x uh, dimension and a delta t uh, dimension <coughs> in time. And we integrate the uh, partial differential equation on in each uh, control volume. So, so what happens is that uh, uh, Q represents uh, in our case the water content. So the water content uh, in the cell I at time level N is evolved uh, to the water content in cell I at time levels N plus one according to the fluxes that we have at the border of our control volume. And even eventually there is a source term that is uh, for the research equation the, uh, can be the above transpiration. So if we use a semi-implicit finite volume method, the partial differential equation can be discretized in this, in this way, uh, where uh, uh, here we have the water content at time levels n plus one, and the water content at the level n, that is on the right si hand side of this equation. Uh, the green lines uh, um, and the lines uh, represent uh, the discretization of the water fluxes and uh, the term S is uh, for example the evapotranspiration. If we apply this discretization to each uh, con the control volumes of uh, our domain we end up with a non-linear system. It, the system is non-linear because uh, the water content is a non-linear function of the water suction. And this is the main problem when uh, we try to solve, we want to solve the Richard's equation. Because uh, if we want to, if we think to the scalar case, uh, to solve a nonlinear function, we can use the Newton algorithm. But uh, since the, in this case the function is nonlinear, the Newton algorithm cannot be used. Because the function is not, the derivative of the water content is a non-monotone function. And uh, here there is a plot uh, which uh, represents the derivative of the, of the water content. So the idea is uh, to the, the define other two functions, P and Q, which uh, the, uh, there are two monotone functions, and their difference uh, gives you the original uh, derivative of the water content. So then we can apply the Newton algorithm uh, twice. Uh, the first one uh, to when we use this uh, the p function, and the second time uh, using the q function. So in this case, we are uh, sure that uh, we can uh, the method uh, can converge to our solution. Another problem uh, dealing with uh, the Richards equation is that uh, uh, the Richards equation uh, the subsurface flow is coupled with the surface flow 
but historically the true, there is no just one equation that describes uh, the two uh, problems because the surface flow is described by the Navier-Stokes equation or some uh, simplification and uh, the subsurface flow is described by the Richards equation so there are two different equations that have to be coupled in literature there are um, different strategies to couple this equation are proposed there are uh, for example some models uh, uh, which uh, solve the um, surface flow and then uh, with the, what happens on the surface they solve the Richards equation uh, and there is no feedback between the two the two domains other try to take into account some feedback so they iterate the solution but what we decide to use is a uh, the method uh, proposed by uh, Michael Dumsa, a professor here in Trento. And so what we do is just, uh, for the 1D case, it's quite simple because instead uh, in the in the derivative, uh, temporal derivative, uh, in the Richards equation there is the water content, uh, but we can decide to change this uh, 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 state function with another one, for example, H, uh, that is uh, the water depth. The water depth is a function that depends on the C variable and H is equal to zero uh, every time that C is negative but as soon as C becomes positive, H is equal to C to psi. So just changing the definition of the state variable of this equation we can couple the two, the two problems. And in this way, we can um, simulate and model both the Orton runoff and the Damian runoff. So in this case, uh, this graph represents the solution. So on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have the depth. And we can see that uh, uh, the precipitation starts. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, also the, run the runoff starts. But uh, in this case, uh, when the precipitation started, there is some infiltration, there is no runoff. On and the some left. On the right. Okay. And uh, after some time, uh, there is some uh, water ponding. And here in this graph, we can see that uh, there is some infiltration, and then there is a, a layer that is uh, with a curve, has a smaller hydraulic conductivity. So here the filtration, the water cannot flow in this, uh, in this part of the domain, so it accumulates it here until this uh, first layer becomes saturated, and so the runoff starts. But in the left side, do we have in reality this, this situation because we have always delay time for runoff? And sorry? We have delay time the for left, runoff. Uh, yeah, so how is it possible when we have rainfall immediately at the same uh, because uh, the for example the soil is very it's uh, with a characterized by a very small uh, hydraulic conductivity so the water cannot infiltrate the, the, the flux through the soil surface is smaller than the rainfall uh, intensity so some some water start to form in this case uh, water can infiltrate in the first layer but it cannot go down here yeah. so the soil starts to saturate and when it's fully saturated the water yeah, stays on the surface another problem is uh, that the uh, Richards equation depends also on temperature so temperature can modify the hydraulic uh, conductivity and uh, as soon as the temperature increases we have a higher hydraulic uh, conductivity and in this case, uh, it's just uh, um, a numerical simulation. So we apply the same boundary condition at the top, this uh, rainfall time series. And, we ju and I changed uh, the temperature of the soil. And in this graph, you can see that uh, with a temperature of uh, 5 degrees, uh, the light blue, this is the water, the ponding at the soil surface. And uh, the red one is with uh, the hotter temperature, so the difference is quite high because uh, the red case we have uh, uh, some, I don't know, maybe 15 uh, millimeters, but in, when soil is colder, the bonding can be also 30 millimeters. 
Also, the water content can depends on the on the temperature because the temperature modifies the water suction. And here, the difference uh, uh, the, between the water pumping at different temperature is uh, it is smaller. But this uh, uh, tell us that probably we have to, if you want to take account temperature, we have to couple the Richards equation with uh, the energy equation. So we can take into account also the evolution of the soil temperature over time. And now I can give you the project.